I pray this is what the Lord will do. These are the words of Jesus today. I pray that He give the life. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit. And they are life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I want to read that again because I pray that the, these words will be spirit and they will bring life. It is Amen. the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit. And they are life. Amen. Father in heaven, I thank you for this holy word, this beautiful congregation. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your flesh and your blood. Thank you, Lord, that you came to this earth and you came to save sinners from their sins. Yes. Lord, I thank you, Lord, because you have forgiven us of our sins. Yes. Lord, if there's anybody here that cannot say that, I pray that, Holy Spirit, that you would go out. You would take these words, Lord, and that you would touch every heart, every person, so that when they walk out of here, they will know that they're saved and have eternal life. Yes. Praise you, Jesus, for the blood that was shed that we just sung about, God. Yes, yes. Was getting emotional just thinking about how great of a work Hallelujah. that was. Yes. That you would die on a cross. Amen. That you would be ri risen from the dead and that you would conquer death, grave, and the hell and hell so that we could have eternal life. Yes. Yes. So, Lord, I know it's by your blood. That has made us clean. Yeah, it is by your blood that has washed us. And forgiven us of all sin. Yes. Yes. Jesus it is by your life. That you lived on this earth. To prepare us for your kingdom. Yes. I pray Lord that we would hear what you have to say. In your precious name everybody said. Amen. 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 Just look at your neighbor and tell them. It's good to eat with you this morning. Spiritual. We're going to eat a spiritual meal together. You know, if we've ever needed Jesus, we need Jesus today. You know, I think about the uh, the world we live and the things that we're facing as a people. Brothers and sisters, these are trying times. Amen. You know, I think I think really we're in the beginning of the uh, the, the beginning of. I don't, want, I don't want somebody to quote me walking out of here and say, Pastor thinks we're in the tribulation. I don't know. Birth pains, Pastor. But these, these are, really they are birth pains. Uh, when I look at where we are as a culture, you know, my heart breaks for lost people. People that are lost, and you can just fill in the blank with by with with anything that would cause a person to not choose Jesus. It can be a relationship, it can be an idol, it can be oh, anything. It can be how the enemy has gotten them in a in a bad way because they believe lies. This cosmic battle between truth and lie is, is happening in the unseen world, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. In the spiritual world, there is a there is a war and battle going on. Amen. A battle for souls, a battle for people's minds. Jonathan, I told someone the other day, I never thought people could get so crazy. <laughs> but it's amazing how people's minds have just went to the other extreme so so quick and how 
people can just be so, so bent out of shape. And really it's because people don't know Jesus. I mean, sin is the problem, brothers and sisters. Not a lifestyle. Not money. Not a thing. Not a place. Not, you know, they live over in Haiti or... You know, they live in another, they live in a certain country. No, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, sin is the problem. Amen. But we have as a church, we as believers have the solution. And his name is Jesus. Amen. And at the sound of that name, demons tremble. At the sound of his voice, angels are dispersed and dispatched. Angels are not people. They are just angelical spiritual figures that God created that Jesus can use to assist us on this earth. And that he uses for special, uh, special purposes. But Jesus is the answer. And he came to this earth so that... Not just so he can do something for us physically that we see with the physical eye. But he came so that whoever puts faith in him would have eternal life. Yes. He gives us eternal life. He is the bread from heaven. He is an essential. <laughs> he is an essential. He is essential, brothers and sisters. We've heard that word used quite a bit. Well, you know, I, you know, such and such is essential up there. You know, nurses are essential. And I thank God for every nurse, every doctor, every daycare worker, every school teacher, every paramedic. I thank God for every essential person. And that necessity for Jesus is, is not going to go away. That, that void in, 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 in our heart that, that we had when we were lost, that, was, that God created for salvation for Him, is going to be there. Because He is essential. When we eat, it's essential. If I was to say, we're going on a 40-day fast as a church, some of the people would look at me and say, I can't do that. And I can't do it. I've never been on a 40-day fast. But a seven-day or a three-day, we, we, food is essential. There are things in life that are essential. Food is one of them. Water is essential. Jesus is essential. Amen. On this following day, on the following day of this story that I read to you in John chapter 6, this is a long chapter. It is 70, 71 verses. I can't read them all to you. I guess I could, but I'm not going to read them all to you. I want to just start on the day before the day we read our text. Jesus is over at the Sea of Galilee, which is also called the Sea of Tiberias. A great multitude is following him because he is doing miracles. And don't want God, when we seek Jesus, can't he do a miracle? Amen. Amen. He'll do a miracle. He can do a miracle, can he? Yeah. A great multitude followed him because they, the Bible says they saw signs in verse 2 that he performed. They seen him heal diseases. The Bible says that he went up on a mountain so he could get with his disciples and get a good view. It's the, it was Passover. It was the feast. About to be the feast of the Jews where it was about to happen. So there was a lot of festivities and stuff that were going on. 
And the Bible says that on this mountain that Jesus lifted his eyes and he sees this great multitude coming toward him. Coming toward him. And he looks at Philip and he says, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? Jesus knew, the Bible says, that in the next verse, that he was doing this just to test them. And brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that this life is one big test. It is one big test. And say, so, well, Jesus won't test me. Well, you wouldn't have a testimony if he didn't test you. No, I did not. No, I'm telling you, testing is a part of it, part of the relationship. Anybody got a testimony out there? Yes. Anybody want to right now do something very special and thank God, spiritual, and thank God for the test? Yes. Anybody right now just want to take a praise break and say, thank you, Jesus, for the test in my life. Thank you for the testimony. That's spiritual there. Why? Because the Bible says we overcome by the words of our testimony by the blood of the Lamb. Very powerful. Your story is very powerful. These people were about to experience this test. Philip says, hey, we got 200 denarii. We got enough that we can probably disperse, but I don't think it'll be enough for people to be full and people to be able to eat. And then another one of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, he says, I know what we can do for the rest. There's a little lad over there. He's got five loaves, five loaves of bread, two fish. But I just don't know what they're, I don't know what that's going to do for so many people out there, Andrew says. Jesus is sitting there and he says, okay. We took inventory. We got two hundred dollars, two hundred denarii. We got five loaves, two fish. I think we got enough. Everybody, go, 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 sit them down. We're going. We'll have a meal. Jesus made the people sit down. They put them in this nice grass. They said there was about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks and blessed it. Now brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, there is nothing that can, that is, uh, that, that we just, I desire. Nothing we should desire more than the blessings of the Lord and the favor of God. Because here goes the thing about the blessing of the Lord. When God blesses you and you have God's favor, He can take what you have and He can do so much more than you've ever dreamed of. He can stretch it longer than it's ever you thought it could ever stretch. He can do miracles like you never thought he would do as you seek Jesus and seek the Lord. He, he tells these disciples, go distribute. And the Bible says that they were full. And you know this story. You've heard this story. The Bible says that Jesus said, I want you to gather all the, uh, the remains. I want you to put them in a basket, the fragments, so that nothing's lost. And when he gathered them all up, they had leftovers. After a buffet, they had leftovers. Now, I'm going to tell you, in my house, you don't have many leftovers. <laughs> At this particular meal, the Lord's blessing was so miraculous. That not only could it feed almost 5,000 people, but there was some leftovers. The Bible says that these people looked at Jesus and said, truly, this is a prophet that has came into the world. Mm. Now that's the following morning of the following day.
that I read to you in Scripture. That's the following morning. Now let me get to you in the afternoon, evening time. The Bible says that Jesus perceived that the people were about to come to him and make him a king. And Jesus hadn't fulfilled all that the Father had told him to do yet. He departed and he remained on a, on a mountain by himself alone. Can I tell you that it's okay to be alone? Can I tell you that to get along with Jesus, that that is okay? Can I tell you that Jesus often would get along so that he could hear and so that he could allow the, the Lord and the, and, the, and the Father to minister to him? There may be somebody here that's alone today. There may somebody be here that's fighting loneliness. And I want to tell you, that is a real deal. If you're fighting loneliness because of a situation, I'm going to tell you, that is a real deal. Maybe you've never seen your mom. Maybe you've never seen your dad. Maybe you lost a spouse. I don't know. Maybe you just are so overwhelmed that you say, I don't think anybody understands what I'm going through. Anybody ever said that? Right. Brothers and sisters, that's a lonely place to be. But it's also a good place to be because when you get to that place, a lot of times you can hear that still small voice that the Lord told us about last Sunday. He could speak to us and He could minister to us. And the Bible says that He was on this mountain alone and it came to evening time that the disciples went out to the sea and he, they got into a boat and they went over to Capernaum. Capernaum was the headquarters of Jesus. The Bible says it was already dark and Jesus had not come to them. The Bible says that they were on the boat and a great storm arose from the sea. And the Bible says that the wind started blowing and out there on the sea that were rolling. And the Bible says that they rode about three or four miles on the sea. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the storm, they see Jesus. And he's walking on water. And he walks up to the boat. And he says, it is I. Do not be afraid. I love the next verse because the Bible says that they willingly receive him into the boat. <laughs> now I'm telling you, whenever a heart or a person willingly receives Jesus into their life, willingly says, come into my heart, willingly puts faith in Jesus, I'm telling you, I've seen some immediate things take place. In this scripture, the Bible says that immediately they just found themselves at the land. They had got so caught up in Jesus and what he had just done, them walking that the Bible says immediately, and maybe you need something done immediately, focus on Jesus. Ask Jesus willingly to come and in your life so that he, could, he might want to do something immediately for you. You never know. And then we get to the next morning. To the preaching text. The next morning. The following day. When the people were standing on the other side. They saw that there was no other boats there. Except the one that the disciples had, had used. So think about all these people coming across. Getting to Capernaum. They got to go to Jesus' headquarters. The Bible says that they... We're looking for Jesus. Because we said those two words. Seeking Jesus. Brothers and sisters, when you seek Jesus, and let me just say, He's all we need. I feel like just singing a song right about now. He's all I need. Jesus. 
is all I need. He's all I need. Hallelujah. He's all You're seeking Jesus. And you understand what he's about to teach these people. Who were thinking that it was going to be like whenever they were receiving manna. When their fathers were fed. And their, their people that were before them. And Moses' day when they received the manna from heaven. When you see what Jesus was talking about right here. And that he is the bread of life. That he really is all I need. That if I will set my sails on seeking Jesus. If I, will, if I will just worry about what Jesus is wanting to do. His purpose in our life. If I will just worry about his opinion. If I will just worry about his presence in my life. If I will just seek Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you that it is unlimited what God can do if we will just seek Jesus. Amen. As a matter of fact, I hear the Lord speaking to my heart in the Spirit, and that is going to be what 2022 is truly about at Hope Chapel. Amen. It's not about transition because, yes, we're going over there and we're going to be in a new place. But I'm telling you that building's not going to do one thing for a sinner. Amen. Unless we got Jesus there and if he can be felt and his power can be, if the power of his resurrection can go in and convict and heal and deliver, that building over there is not going to be. It's not going to do one thing. It's going to be nice, but it's not going to save one person. But I can tell you what to help somebody out before they get there and what can help you out is if the church of the living God, if you, if the families will start, and me will start seeking Jesus yeah. with all of our heart, yeah. all of our soul, yeah. all of our mind, yeah. then when we walk out of the house, when we walk out of His presence, then people can see Jesus yeah. in us, and I'm telling you, they'll want something different yeah. than this world, yeah. and we'll be able to tell them, it's Jesus. We got something to offer you, but I don't know if you want to take it. You got to willingly get in the boat with you. Will you willingly accept it? Will you really, willingly say, Come into my heart? Would you willingly allow God to go into the crevices of your heart and seek Him? And I'm telling you, seeking Jesus is a powerful thing. One writer says it this way. You ask and you'll get it. You seek and you will find it. You knock and you will it'll be open unto you. One, one, I think it was Jesus that said, seek ye first. There's something about this seeking. There's something about this, this searching, this, this searching for Jesus that the God the Father just loves in heaven when, when the Bible says that it is impossible to please God without faith. <clears throat> and he, he who comes to Him must, must come to Him and that He will diligently reward those who diligently seek Him. Yeah. <clears throat> it is in this seeking that we find God. We find His purpose and we find His will. It's not in the manna. It's not in the multiplying and taking the baskets home. It's not just in the miracle. Brothers and sisters, it's in seeking Jesus. I told someone the other, just, well, this, just this morning I told them. I said, listen, you're, you're seeking Jesus after a miracle like these people. You're seeking Jesus after a miracle, but Jesus just don't want to give you some miracle. He wants to give you Him. And when you find Jesus, you'll get your miracle. You'll get whatever you need. You'll get your answer. You'll get you'll get.
get the sea split, whatever it takes, when you seek Jesus, Amen. I've never known one person to get saved because of a miracle. But I'm telling you this, I've seen one, a person get saved when they realize that the greatest miracle in their life was what Jesus has done for them on the cross. God does this just like these people. I think I thought you were the one that was going to feed us the man. The man. Isn't that what happened? Isn't that what happened? Jesus? Our fathers. Listen, Jesus, what shall we do? What? That we may work the works of God. Verse 28. They're asking, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Why is it that we always think that there's more that we have to do? Brothers and sisters, these people, they were making the mistake that we often make sometimes. Like we can add something else to what? To seeking Jesus. Once you seek Jesus, everything else flows from that relationship in your life. Everything else. And he said, this is the work of God that you may believe in him who's, whom he sent. Well, what about Moses? This manna. This bread, of, this bread that come from heaven. That's what manna means. Bread from heaven. I thought that this was going to be like what you did for our forefathers. I thought that just like yesterday, you remember you, 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 you multiplied the five loaves and the two fish. Just I thought it was going to be just like yesterday, Jesus. And Jesus was saying, no. I did all that to tell you, I am the bread of life. I just didn't want to quench a hunger pain. I come to save your soul. I come to give you eternal life. And that's what he says. Most assuredly I say to you, Moses didn't give you bread from heaven, but my Father gives you true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus. Seeking, falling in love with Jesus is the answer. Yes. It's the answer to a broken relationship. It's the answer to a wayward child. It's the answer to a pandemic. It's an answer to grieving. It's an answer to loneliness. Seek Jesus. Yes. Yes. He will answer. Yes. Amen. It's the answer to anything you will face. Yes. Seeking Jesus is the answer. He is the bread of life. And what he was teaching them was, I am essential. Listen to me. I am essential. That means I am absolutely necessary is what Jesus was telling them. I am indispensable. When you get me, you get all that the Father has for you. Right. Thank you Lord. When you get me, you get the kingdom of God working in your life. When you get me, you start understanding that you're seated in heavenly places. Amen. With Christ Jesus. Amen. When you get me, you get my spirit. Amen. When you get me, I'll speak to you. When you get me, I'll navigate through this life Amen. journey with you. When you get me, I can heal the hurt. I can stay closer to you than a brother when you get me. Jesus is saying, when you get me, I'll meet your every need according to my riches which are in Christ Jesus. It is. When you seek Jesus, He might not meet your physical need like you think He should. But I'm telling you, when you seek Jesus, He'll go down into your soul and He'll meet, and he'll, he'll do a spiritual work way down deep Sometimes nobody else can understand. Sometimes it's in lonely, desolate places where he has to do this work. But when you see Jesus and you meet him, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter if it's a mountain or a valley. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. When you see Jesus, you find him, you'll be able to say, oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. I thought that manna. I thought that manna was good because it tastes like honey. 
And it was like cornbread when the dew would dry. It would form up. It was be, it would be flat, and they would unzip the tent, and there they go. They would. They, the, the Bible says that they told them, "Go take enough for the day." They get enough, just enough for the day, just enough for the day. And every day they would open it for forty years. They get that man, and they get that flatbread. And I don't know about you, but I told them in the morning service, "I love biscuits." <laughs> Anybody else here know what I'm talking about? I don't know where we can. We can I love biscuits. I'm praying that Miss Kathy, I told her, I, maybe the Lord's speaking to Miss Kathy. Maybe she'll call me or Melissa or somebody. Somebody will call and say, I, got, I want you to come over to the house. And I can have a, I can have a deja vu moment with Grandma Emma. I remember Grandma Emma when I was small. And you could tell, you could, you could open the door and you could smell the biscuits. And you could look on the counter and you could you could see the flower where they weren't that pretty, but boy, they were sure good. I tell you, they were sure good. It was like there was never enough of those biscuits. But it seemed like when you got done, you were full. I love I love uh, Cracker Barrel. I told him in the first service, I said, you know, I roll deep. We have five in our family. They are all boys except me. And they'll bring a bit, they'll bring a thing of biscuits out with some cornbread. You know what I'm talking about. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm telling you, they're so good. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, you take the top layer and you take it apart, it comes halfway apart. Yes, sir. And then you say, Can I get some Honey. some Honey. apple butter? Oh, yeah. Honey. Honey butter. You get some apple butter. I'm telling you. When I go, I have to go, our family goes, I start feeling bad. I told them this morning because they only give you about five or so biscuits. <laughs> well, we can eat those biscuits and it's like when they sit them on the table. <laughs> it's like a miracle, man. I tell you, they, they can grab, if there's any left, they can grab two at a time. It's like, wham! And it's like they go way right before me. You even get one. I was I looked at Mandy before my, Israel and the boys go, we go eat, and they'll just, it's like, where did it go? And then I have to look at them, and I say, can I get another basket? Can I get another basket? And then, we can't stop with two baskets when my family goes, because that's only two biscuits apiece, but who can stop with two biscuits? Can I, get, can I just get one more basket? One more basket. If you can go into that kitchen and just seek me out one more biscuit. If they don't have any more and you got one left, don't bring it to the table. Call me over to the side. <laughs> seek out one of those biscuits. Why? Why I love those biscuits? Because they're good. I don't know, I don't know if they're healthy or not. Probably not. <laughs> when Jesus was saying, seek me, seek me, I am the bread of life. Three times in that chapter, I am the bread of life. I am the living bread of life. Seek me, seek me. Seek me, I'll replace the biscuits. I know they were thinking, well, he's, the, he's a prophet. If we follow him every day, every morning we get up, if he did it for our family, you know you know, this man right here, he can multiply whatever we bring to him for as long as we live. And Jesus was saying, no. I'm not going to multiply. You seek after me. Not because I've done a sign, but you seek after me because you're hungry. And I'm telling you, there's a hungry world out there for Jesus. I don't know how we can do it. I don't know if the team is listening. But I'm going to do something special somehow to promote seek Jesus. 2022, seek Jesus. Don't worry about anything else, just seek Jesus. I don't know what's going to happen in 2022. I can tell you after talking to people, the end of 2019, the end of 2020, the end of this 2021, it's been like this right here. But I'm telling you, just seek Jesus, church. I told another person this week, their life was all a mess. I 
listen to them for, a, for an hour and 15 minutes sob and cry and think that I can fix their problem. And I looked at them after, at the hour and 15 minutes and I said, your life's a mess. There's only one person that can fix it. And you got to seek Jesus. And His name is Jesus. And if you really mean business, then you will let Him in the boat. You will let Him get into your life. And He'll work everything out. But another man ain't going to do it. Another drug ain't going to do it. Another life ain't going to do it. Only Jesus can get it done in your life. I tried not to scream, but they sung a song that said his blood's like it runs through my veins. I'm telling you, it's like fire running through my veins right now. I'm telling you, Jesus is here. And he'll walk right into your life if you'll seek at him. If you're willing to say, get in the boat with me, Jesus. Love my family, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. I'm not going anywhere else but to you, Jesus. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I give you my life. And watch what he does. It'll take you from dancing at a bar on top of a countertop. It'll take you from doing drugs and drinking alcohol. He'll take you from all these different things. And brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, He will replace it with Himself. And when you taste to see that He's good, you won't desire another piece of on this earth. When He's essential. See, I know, I know what you're thinking. No, I may go after this. I may go after this and get me one of them good old biscuits. Over there. <laughs> right? I'm talking about different because they had an issue. Listen, listen to, listen to the whole chapter right here. 71 verses. They missed the point of what Jesus was trying to teach them. Right. They were still thinking, how can this be? How can you, how can, how can a man say, how can we eat of a man's flesh, one verse says. How can we do that? How can we drink of this blood? You know the answer? I'm going to give you the answer to that. You know the answer? I read it to you. It's the verse of scripture, but I read it to you. It's the spirit. Yeah. It's the spirit. I eat of his flesh. I drink of His blood because I get on my knees and we drag ourselves to church and we worship Him and we eat of that book yeah. in the Spirit. It just ain't a novel to me, brothers and sisters. Right. It just ain't a textbook to me. These just aren't words that many people have spoken that's come together to put together some, some theory about God. Right. No, sir. Right. No, ma'am. This is bread from heaven. Yes. This right here, and I eat it in the spirit. Do you do you understand? Yes. You have to eat this in the spirit. Amen. You have to. Amen. Or you won't ever understand. You'll dismiss it. You'll look at Jesus like these people did. And you'll say, I can't believe that. I can't believe that. And the Bible says that. Many, many, many left him. Many of his disciples, the Bible says, left him. They didn't get it. What I'm preaching to you, the Spirit speaks these words to you. Yes, yes. In that scripture, many didn't get it. Yes. Right. And there'll be some that will walk out of here and it breaks my heart. Yes. And some won't get it. Some of them, the pastor was just loud, or he was feeling it, and it was a good message, but you won't get it tomorrow morning. And you won't get it this afternoon, this evening. And you won't get it Tuesday and Wednesday. Or you're just, the enemy will just try to get you to think. Ah, this, this is. This is too much. 
just seeking Jesus is too much. I'm telling you, it is life. Amen. If you will eat of this bread, if you will eat of this life, Jesus' life, it will give you eternal life. Amen. And you will live. Amen. You believe that? Amen. I'm going to ask you, Phil. Tell you about salvation and our relationship with the Lord. I know it's everybody's dressing up. I felt safe. Did y'all see? Which one was it, Brent? Hunter come in dressed like the Major Turtle this morning. I felt a little safe. I actually felt real safe. Where's the hole? Okay, where's the Major Turtle? Thank you, Landon. He needs to be doing this. <laughs> Thank you. Did you feel safe? Mm -hmm. I did. I felt safe. Brought joy to my heart. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you something about Jesus. And this is how I think we treat him sometimes. I'm like, I'm going to say this with the help of the Holy Ghost. <coughs> I think we treat him like a sweet treat. I think we treat salvation sometimes, if we're not careful, like it's just a sweet treat. Oh, man, we need to go to church. Pastor going to make me feel good today. Get to sing, and man, it can blow. She's got some pipes. <laughs> oh, she sings. You can just feel the anointing. And, and, and we come in, and we just get it just enough. Just enough sweetness that we get we don't even realize that that ain't even salvation. And even salvation. Because we think that Jesus is just some sweet tree. <coughs> we can just well, eat him as a dessert. He's just going to feel that craving. I just need just enough of that. I just need just enough of Jesus. Because I'm craving that sugar. I'm craving that ice cream from Simon. I just need just enough of Jesus to feel that craving. That sweetness of Jesus. But Lord, seeking Him, praying. Lord, having to do what this Bible says and believe it like this Bible free, like this Bible was written. <coughs> Lord, that's too much. I can't. I can't fulfill this book. I'm telling you. You need enough. You got to seek Jesus. To start living this book right here. Come on. You can do it. You and your family can do it. See Jesus and watch what he does. Amen. These people said, are you going to do another sign? So that, is there another work I can do? No, listen. Seek Jesus and then the miracle will come. Seek Jesus. Pray. The essential. Jesus is essential. What's he said? Well, I can't say it. What's essential? Prayer. Is essential? The giving, the wor worship is essential? This is all essential to us enduring to the end. Enduring to the end. We want Jesus and we just want it out of convenience, brothers and sisters. And I'm telling you, I don't think the, the Spirit of God is, I think He's turning a, a death. I think he's turning away from that kind of foolishness now. I really do. I think he's wanting to know people that really truly see. That are praying, that has a prayer life, that, that are trusting, and that get on their knees and read this Bible. That are worshiping him, that come to church, that just not come to church, but that will truly seek the Lord when they come to church. Not just want a sweet treat from God, but understanding that it takes endurance. Do you know what? If you receive an eternal life, do you know that it 
that it's going to be because of your endurance. If, you, if, if we receive eternal life, the Bible says, it will be because of our endurance. Those who endure to the end shall be saved. That's endurance. Those who endure will receive eternal life. What is there to endure? What is there to endure? I'm telling you, the pains of this world. I love you enough to tell you that He'll give you the endurance that will continue and last. It will help you. If you will seek Him, you will find Him. He will hold your hand. He will guide you. Salvation is more than just a tree. It's a relationship with, this, with Jesus, the Savior of the world. So He was telling these guys, I'm essential. I know you're tired. I know you might be stressed. I know you might be fatigued. I know you might be worn out. But if you eat the bread of life, if you eat my flesh, drink of my blood, if you'll worship me, if you'll seek me, I'll help you. That's the, that's the invitation. Right? Hey, that's the invitation. He said, if you'll seek me, I'll help you. If you will willingly let me into your life, into your family, into your boat, into your home, I'll help you. If you're willingly do it, I hope y'all calm the seas. The winds have calmed down and immediately you I can I believe there could be an immediate blessing today for somebody. Else. Because you can get so caught up in the Lord that immediately you'll be at the other side of whatever it was. You'll be at the other side of whatever it was. Immediately. I'm asking you to stand if you would. I'm asking you to stand.
reach your hand. I want you to understand right here. I want you to say this with me. I want you to understand this prayer. I want you to say, Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner. Lord, I've heard this message. But there's something different about it. It's spiritual. What I, I received from the Spirit this morning. And I believe in what you did on the cross for me, Lord. I believe that you died and rose again so that I can have eternal life, Lord. And I'm confessing. I confess right now that I need you as my Savior. Lord, I ask you to come into my heart. I want to live for you. I want to seek you, Lord Jesus. I want to search. I want to search you and search you out in my life, Lord. God, I, I thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I will put the cross, the blood, and your body, Jesus. I will eat and live and die with you for eternity. It's in your precious name, Lord God. I thank you, God, for saving me and forgiving me of my sins. Brothers and sisters, I know there were several hands that went up. Pray this prayer. If you pray this prayer, if you've asked Jesus into your heart, I feel the Lord in this place. Greg, I feel Jesus. I feel the Spirit of the Lord in this place. If you pray this prayer, would you just lift your hand up? If you pray it, would you just lift your hand up? Yes. 